Liz, um, the runway looks good to you. Um, the queues now highest level since January of 22. To Josh's point about mega cap, I'm looking at, at my screen here and I've got every one but one uh, in the green and, and nicely so today. Yeah, well, think about what pressured those stocks from the end of July into August and September. It was higher rates. It was a resurgence in inflation. Both of those things have all but been taken off the table in the last couple weeks. So I think it makes sense that there's a run here. Also, to Josh's point, absent some exogenous shock or absent some sort of data that none of us were expecting, I do think there's still room for a rally to continue. And that's coming from somebody who's been pretty cautious all year. But the reality is that lower rates and the idea of a soft landing still being possible and if not priced into the market unless there's something standing in its way which I don't think we're going to get really nervous about from a macroeconomic point until early next year the rally can keep going and we probably grind through this for a while all right so let's let's do Microsoft um, and, and, and get that story going Joe because it's up you know 1.6 percent three hundred seventy five dollars by now everybody knows the story they hire Sam Altman to lead their new AI team all this drama at OpenAI, uh, and now what you know, some are, are calling chaos, and, and what that's all going to mean. You just want to scratch the surface first with, as a, as a Microsoft shareholder, what you're thinking about, and then we'll present some of the arguments around what this really means. It's remarkable because a $13 billion investment, which gives you 49% of the company, you actually get more than you were getting with that investment with the intellectual capital that you're acquiring here with Sam Altman and others joining. I suspect there'll be more to follow from OpenAI. This is certainly something that will benefit Microsoft. It's also going to benefit Meta. And I think that's one of the reasons why Meta is at its highest level since December of 2021. Let's remember that OpenAI has 92% of Fortune 500 companies, 2 million customers. Well, a lot of those customers right now, Scott, are looking elsewhere in terms of software and Meta can offer with its LLM, its large language model, uh, Llama, a, a, a clear alternative. So Meta is benefiting there as well. Um, this is obviously something, as I said, that speaks strongly to Microsoft. And it's a reminder. It's a reminder what this year has been about. What this year has been about with generative AI and the contribution that it has had to the overall market. And it's the reason why the NASDAQ 100 today is at its highest level for the year on an intraday basis. So I'll come back to you. You, yes. you know, so they get they have 49 percent of open AI, mm -hmm. which was said to be valued at, at 86 billion dollars. What's it worth now? You can't answer the question anymore because you don't right. know with the chaos and the so-called brain drain and all of this turmoil. So what is that interest yeah, so really worth? Is it the coup for Microsoft that it's being portrayed? Now, Dan Ives would suggest absolutely it is. He calls this a world series of poker move for the ages. Those are his words. Quote, we view Microsoft now even in a stronger position from an AI perspective with Altman and Brockman at, at Microsoft running AI. I, I completely agree with that. And I, I think the interesting thing about it is, look, they were thinking of selling shares in October. A lot of employee shares were going to be sold. Valuation, as you said, 86 billion, somewhere around 80 to 90 billion. So obviously, I think the company right now is, is in, I don't want to use the word perilous, but it is certainly in a injured condition relative to where it was previously. Um, there, there was... Back to 2018 in the initial stages, you had Peter Thiel, you had Reid Hoffman, and you had Elon Musk that were behind find, uh, funding this company. And one of the critical things that they did at that time was they took the chief scientist from Alphabet and they brought him over. Why did they do that? Because they wanted to slow down Alphabet's AI intentions. So I, I think now with Microsoft in control of that intellectual capital, I think you also have to ask yourself, what's the derivative effect on Alphabet? Is Alphabet in a better or a worse position because you have uh, Altman and Brookman over at Microsoft?